uh, welcome to the session. Uh, I will be talking about user research and how I use this to design public transportation in GNOME. Uh, yeah, so my name is Andreas. I've been involved in GNOME for about 10 years now. Um, during daytime, I work at uh, Red Hat as an interaction designer, uh, mostly on a project called Cockpit. It's a server UI, basically, um, making it easy to, easier to administer your server. Um, but during the nights, I do design on you know, maps, which I will be talking about today. Uh, so it started with Marcus Lumblad, uh, a GNOME Maps developer who filed this bug, uh, where he said he needed a sign for public transportation um, because uh, GNOME Maps already had support for getting from point A to B by walking, by biking, and by taking a car. But he wanted to add a fourth method, uh, which was using public transportation. Uh, and I found this uh, quite an interesting uh, challenge uh, because I grew up in a very little small village uh, on the countryside of Sweden called Bekelund, and you can see the map here behind. Um, about 200 people live there, um, very remote. So there's only one bus leaving uh, three times a day if you wanted to get somewhere. Uh, and this was like after walking to the bus stop, which was two kilometer away from my parents' house. Um, but these days, I live in Gothenburg, um, uh, fairly central um, in an apartment. And from the bus stop that is just outside my, my, my door, basically, um, there is a bus or a tram going off like pretty much every third minute. Uh, so I found this quite an interesting uh, challenge. Um, and, you know, like I thought, like, well, I would know this, right? I've seen both sides of public transportation, you know, like on the countryside, very remote, and like in the middle of a city. So I should, I should know it all, right? I would just need to apply my usual process for when I design things, uh, going from like an idea of what a application or a function in an application is supposed to do, um, deciding on who is this for and uh, how should it work. And after that, um, just drawing it out in mockups. And after that, just implementing it. And of course, like this process is a lot more complicated than this in reality, because you have a lot of review back and forth and stuff like that. Um, uh, so, but uh, I, I talked to my girlfriend, uh, Fabiana, about this. And uh, she's born and raised in Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. And after just a couple of minutes, I, I realized that uh, we actually had very different experiences and expectations on uh, public transportation. Uh, so it actually appeared that my process looked more like this, because like I know how I use public transportation, but I actually don't know how other people are using public transportation. Um, so, yeah, there was apparently a missing step here, full of unknowns. Um, so I, I realized I, I had to do some research on this. And uh, doing user research, I, I always found it a bit scary before, because I've, I've read a lot of literature on it. Um, but this literature is usually very academic. Uh, and it feels like unless you do a sample of like, I don't know, 500 people or a thousand ideally uh, over a period of a year, then, you know, like, why are you even showing up if you're not doing that? Um, so yeah, I always thought it was a bit scary, but I felt like, yeah, why not, right? Why, why just I uh, don't do it? Because if I just talk to a couple of people, that's already a lot better than just basing all the information on one person, which is myself. Um, so I decided to call up some friends and family 
uh, and ask them some questions. Um, and yeah, it was fairly quick process actually. Um, after some introduction and telling them what I what I wanted, um, and also um, yeah, what I needed help with, and and just telling them like, oh, and this is how I'll use your data, and I will publish the answers, and I hope you're okay with that. Um, it was like, I don't know, maybe like 10, 15 minutes in total, so it wasn't all that complicated, actually. Uh, and I asked them these things, this is some of the things I, I wanted to know. The first one, like, do you own a car? So I wanted to know if, uh, if public transportation was their only option for going longer places. Um, another one was like, what app or website are you using today? So I would just learn about more apps and websites out there that I could look at for inspiration. Um, and then one of them was, yeah, do you prefer a certain mean of transportation? Like, yeah, do you like trains more than buses, right? Um, and I got a lot of very good answers out of this. Uh, I learned a lot of new things. And the people I spoke to, they lived in very different places, like some in the countryside, some in cities. Uh, and uh, two of them were Brazilians, and they could tell me about public transportation in Rio and the difficulties with that. Um, but one thing that really stood out to me was again with this, like, do you prefer a certain mean of transportation? A friend of mine told me, uh, well, I don't prefer a certain mean, but I really do not want to take a bus because I get really, really car sick, like to the extent that I just faint. So I just can't take them. Like, I don't prefer a certain thing. I just really want to avoid buses. Um, so whatever interface, it's very important for me to be able to filter those out because they just don't apply to me. Um, and yeah, this really, I, it was something I, I hadn't thought of at all. Um, okay, so I had all this data, I wrote it all down from the interviews, their answers, and I, I just distilled them down. Um, and I created these fictional characters out of all the data from the six people I got, I took parts of them and and made these personas out of them, like these fictional characters. Um, and yeah, they all have certain features and they all have a mission. Uh, so we can dive into one of them. So one of them, this Yenna character, she lives in New York, just moved there, so she doesn't know the place at all. Uh, yeah. Um, she needs to be at her new job at a certain time, right? And that's her mission. Uh, but more importantly, she gets very carsick and therefore wants to avoid the bus. Um, so I took the information I learned from a friend, directly applied it to one of the scenarios. All right, and once I was done with these scenarios that I had spoken to Marcus about it, and he thought it was all good so far, um, I turned them into mock-ups. And I made sure like that the mock-ups were, that they, they, they met the needs of these personas that then were based on, on the interviews. Um, so I made certain decisions, for example, for going again to the car sickness thing, um, you're able to see what means of transportation you're having here, and you're able to filter out the buses. Um, and if you want to see this in action, I can show it afterwards. Uh, but uh, I didn't want to show it in action because demos always go wrong. Um, and yeah, that was pretty much it. And um, Marcus implemented it, and during the implementation, uh, I also made sure to do some usability testing. Also, just with some friends, me coming over to their place or they coming over to my place, and they were able to, yeah, they were able to, like, yeah, I was able to see, like, oh, did I choose the right widgets? Uh, did I use understandable wording? They were able to 
catch just things that would behave badly in the UI if it clicked on certain things. And we fixed this in the process, and then the next person who tested it after that was able to avoid those. Um, so yeah, these are all the people that helped me. Um, these people they didn't use. These people did the usability testing. Marcus implemented it. And uh, also uh, Open Trip Planner, which is the library that we use uh, for the actual behind the team. So in some sense, you could say like, well, a team of 11 people made this, right? It wasn't just two people. It was 11 people. And um, yeah, if you or if you ever done user research, or if you're interested in it, I would love to uh, talk to you and figure out how we can do this more in the future and to learn how to get better at it together. So yeah, come and grab me after, after the talk, basically. And I think that was it. <clears throat> Questions then. Uh, hello. hello. Is the type of transportation di dynamic? Because like uh, some place don't have a tram, and some place trains are different type of trains, and uh, you also may want like in Paris, for instance, we have the metro and the area and the TER, and like a lot of people, if, if they can avoid it, they take only the metro, not the area. Like this kind of stuff. Right. Um, so the UI, and there are probably uh, tons of places where we could improve this. Um, it does try to um, differ between different means of transportation. So you would be able to select from a, a limited um, list. But I think in total, um, their actual full list in the in, in the library is like something between 40 different means of transportation. But I think it also comes down to what are the scenarios that you need to carry out? What are the actions you need to carry out? Like, and, and where does that differ between the different means of transportation? Okay. So it, it will not depend on the place where you're looking at. It will not like kind of adapt to the different kind of transportation they may have. Uh, oh, right. If you're a city, if you have point A and point B, um, and there are no trams in that city, say it's a city like, I don't know, do New York have trams? I guess they don't, right? No. And if they don't have trams, it won't show up there. Because okay. sure, you could filter them out, but they don't even exist in the first place, so it doesn't matter. OK. Yeah. Uh, how did you arrive to those questions uh, that you asked to the survey participants? I, first of all, I had some some like internal questions on myself, right? I've been using, say, Google Maps. I, I looked at other applications. I looked at, for example, Google Maps, and I realized they do have a filter um, means of transportation there. And I was like, why is that? Is that something I could, like ignore in my UI, or is it something that is really, really crucial? Um, so I think if I hadn't done those interviews and, and gotten those answers, maybe I would either have completely left it out of the design, or I would have, uh, you know, like buried it like further down. Um, one more example of this is like, I figured out that people often take the same same train or bus all the time because they need to go to work or they need to go to university each day. Um, so that's why I opted in to show the line numbers already for those that know, like, well, I just take number eight and I take number three. I know where I take number eight from and I know where I need to switch to number three. And that's it, basically. So yeah, yeah, it was all questions that I asked myself and uh, I didn't do it this time, but maybe next time I would ask, uh, if I would develop something with Marcus again, I would probably 
ask him, like, what are the things you would like to find out? It looks great. Thanks for sharing with us. Um, I have a question about uh, whether or not if, you know, how would you know if a city has public transportation available? Um, and also, like, say it doesn't, um, then what would the UI look like if there is no transportation possible? Is there a way to be able to add that, perhaps, if a city has that information available from their website? So the library we are, we're using, Open Trip Planner, this is obviously not available for all cities in all countries, right? Um, I think the way the UI works, right, is that you search from point A to point B. Um, we probably do a very bad job right now of showing any kind of error state where it says like, well, this trip is simply not possible because it doesn't exist in the data. So that's definitely something we need to look at. Um, this is a feature I, I really, really like in uh, Google Map, uh, which even though it's terrible for privacy, is like you can set home and work, because basically, as as you say, like you often take the same uh, trip. So like some some very often like I only care about like where I go, which change. But I, I live from my home, so like I, I like to click the home button and then just set the address and like so just just an ID like yeah which yeah I think that's that's definitely something I I considered um, I didn't want to include too much in like the first version um, but I think definitely and I mean based on what you're saying and based on like a lot of what the people I was talking to were saying that. It is a fairly common use case, right? That you um, need to get from the same place to the same place every time, or most of the time at least. Um, I'm not super sure how that would look. Um, right now we have a thing so it can look for your current location. Um, that's a start at least if you do plan your trip when you're home. But that could be the point. It will be from your current location to your home, it's just a, a matter of a click. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I'm not super sure how a UI for that would look, but it's definitely a desired feature. Um, could the thing remember that after you've done a search like 10 times, or I don't know what number, um, it could like remember, like, oh, this is a place, right? Um, instead of you having to go through the effort of yourself doing a manual, favorite thing. Um, but we also have a concept for just favor, like starring a certain location. So it's definitely something that it could easily show accessible, so. So, so you mentioned that you did user testing. Uh, I'm wondering, did you only test the you know, the final result, uh, or did you have any prototypes before you started, uh, before coding started? No, I did not have any prototypes, um, like any kind of like paper mockups or anything to have them test with. Uh, but I did test when the, I started doing the testing um, when the branch was still fairly young and still had a lot of unimplemented features. In it, so I mean, one way is that you can dive into a, a track and you can see the walking bit and you can see um, the, the the all the stations um, expand those for when you're new in a city and you don't know what is the stuff before the one that I need to go off with, right? Um, so even when that wasn't working properly, still uh, we I started doing the testing already. And then, yeah, we found things during the ride, and we, we like fixed those, right? And then, so it was not a testing of the final product. It was definitely testing like a thing that was still in progress.
So this may be more a question about the underlying library than the implementation. Oh, I'm probably the wrong person yeah. to answer that. But, but we'll you might try. know, you might know a yes or no state yeah. of it. Um, does it handle things where you have to stop in the middle of your tram ride and walk and then go to another station and then start riding the tram again and then walk some more between stations? And yes, it does. Sort of yeah, it, it has a logic for uh, saying, oh, you need to walk 200 meters to right. the station, take this bus or whatever to this other station, walk for 300 meters, right. and then uh, carry on from there with can another it, one. Can it reroute you if you get lost? I'm sorry? Can it reroute you if you get lost and you're not where you thought you were? No, and I think that's one of the the hard questions as well. Would you take your laptop with you? Maybe, maybe mm -hmm. not, mm -hmm. on the bus. And do you have like a device to, well, you could connect it to your phone. Yeah. But that's another thing, right? I mean, sure, I have this on my laptop. Should there be a functionality for me for to send it to another device yeah. and then be able to carry on the track on the device, right? So it's a possible future edition. If you figure out a good way to do it, I have no idea how. But I think Alan had a question too. Don't make too hard of a question, maybe? <laughs> so it's really cool to see a talk about doing research for design, and we should definitely do more of it. Um, my question is about interviewing. Like, compared to something like a, a usability test, I think like a, a free-form interview or a semi-structured interview, requires a bit more kind of skill and practice perhaps. Like it's not something that everyone is gonna be able to pick up straight away. So I was wondering if there's anything that you learnt about how to ask questions, how to f ask follow-up questions, like just the general technique of interviewing. You know, a lot often times it's like subtle things like allowing a certain kind of length of pause after you ask a question, or, you know, these little things. Yeah. So, so like, I, I don't know, like, do we need to like build up some kind of guide for how to do it or other resources that we could use to help people with that? Yeah, so definitely like in the, in the literature I read, and I think that's a good start, read some, not the books I read specifically, but like there is a good, lot of good literature out there, probably some online resources as well. And I mean, one obvious thing is don't talk too much yourself. As you said, give a little pause and give the person some time, right? Even like make uncomfortable pauses uh, because they will try and fill in more information in that pause, for example, you know? And I think definitely if we try and do this more together, we can learn from each other and everyone learns with experience and uh, get better at it, basically. I mean, I did this for the first time myself. I'm pretty sure, like, next time I'll do it, I'll make it in a less terrible way, of course, you know? <laughs> Hopefully, at least. <laughs> hey, um, just out of curiosity, when you interviewed people and um, when you asked for either uh, the fastest way to get from A to B or... Uh, the smallest number of switching, um, were there also people that asked for the cheapest way? There is a friend of mine, um, the same friend who got car sick. She goes to Japan a lot. Uh, she said one interesting quirk about uh, the Tokyo public transportation system is that unlike a lot of cities, um, they don't have one bus company. They have like six, seven of them or something. Um, so in that case, um, it's very important some of, all of a sudden to know the price of uh, the individual bus. Um, so like, yeah, because they also vary a lot in price, it seems. Um, so yeah, that's definitely one of the things that stood out to me when I, when I talked to some people. And that all came up also in the, do you have any additional thoughts on this whole thing that we just spoke about. So a lot of interesting stuff like that came up in that process. 
uh, about this the same question. Actually, it's also I think when you make a trip, you want to stay with the same company mm. because uh, if 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 you have uh, changes of trains, if you keep the same company, usually it's one ticket, I guess. And uh, if you take another company at this time, so it's, I guess that's something also maybe to take into account when you start a trip. It, if if there are several companies in the same city, may, maybe, I mean, depends on the city, but uh, I guess it will depend. Uh, in this case, they will want to stay with the same company. I know I live in Japan and in Japan, there are several companies also. Yeah. So. So, yeah, I'm not. I mean, yeah, it's also a question of like, what is the information I need out of this? Not too much. Like, is it the same company? Because I would be loyal with a certain company or something. It's not about. But rather, like, I don't want to pay a lot of money. Show me how much money yeah, would be together, right? Okay. And then I, I see like, oh, and this guy, it's like so much cheaper than the other one for some reason. I'm gonna choose that one. It's not about being loyal to the company. It's it's also about being cheaper. It, it is, yeah, yeah. That's the thing, right? So I wouldn't make it so much as a switch of stick to the same company or use different okay. companies, but trying to get to the root to why is this important to the user in the end, and what kind of information do they need to make an informed decision. So yeah, you're right. It's all about the actual money in the end. Uh, actually, this is one case where the software cannot know is like, also you're about Japan, is like as a tourist, when you go to Japan, you can buy this pass, which I call GRI pass with mm -hmm. a GR company. And with this, you can take for free any GR, uh, switch, so the company, mm -hmm. any mm -hmm. GR tickets and the software cannot know this. So in this case, you will want to, to tell the, I want, I, it's for also for the money, but it's, even though actually the price of this pl uh, uh, train will be more expensive uh, if you had to pay it, since you already paid it because you have this pass for two weeks, then you will want to say, ah, I want only GR uh, train, please. Yeah, hey, it's definitely a challenge. Uh, I think a similar thing came up with a friend who lives in the countryside and he said like, well, if I have a certain kind of card, uh, it allows me to take also these trains but general commuters who doesn't have this monthly special card uh, can't take those. Um, I have no idea how the UI would work for that, but it's definitely a an interesting case. And I also think, like, sir, sure, I mostly spoke to Swedish people um, and some who had done some travel. Uh, if in the future I would be able to do more interviews, do interviews together with a lot of other people, we would be able to. A, just be able to talk to a lot more people, um, and uh, B, be able to find out more specific geographic information like that. So I think that would be interesting. Um, you notice that you used personas when, when designing mm -hmm. uh, this. Uh, do you find those uh, actually useful? Like, have you arrived at a point where like, you constructed the the um, image of like Roberto, he's a cheap bastard, he would never take a, a train at, at that point, or is it just, uh, you know? I, I use them for every single thing I design, actually. Um, not always, uh, mostly in cockpit, right? We use it for every single feature, basically, that I design, but those are personas who are rather uh, based on agreements. Like, you you get like a lot of input from different people. Oh, it needs to do this, it needs to do that. And then the personas uh, we use more as just a tool to be able to talk about how a certain thing should be used and talk about it in a more general way rather than having someone say, Oh, but this certain thing, I like that more, and I like that more. So you're able to make it less about your own specific thoughts and needs and be able to take it on a more general level and also be able to change it. Like, oh, this is a thing we would never do, some, some developer you work with, and like, oh, but this, this guy, he doesn't make sense at all. We're not, we're not aiming our product on this person at all. Um, which I think is a lot more useful 
rather than just having a list of features, for example. Oh, we need to have these features and do 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 do. But it, it takes a bit of uh, getting used to. Hi. Uh, oh, dear. Uh, so this is not about uh, actually your talk, but it's uh, a little bit, a little uh, announcement. So we've been using uh, Mapbox for tiles for a little while, and uh, apparently we're very, very successful. We're uh, approaching 10 times the amount of map use that Mapbox wanted to provide in the beginning. So um, that is good, but also bad. Uh, so we're going to have a little bit, bit of a buff to brainstorm what we can do about this. Uh, 16th in the morning in room 118, if you're interested in the, solu the situation with tiles in maps. Please come. Cool. Yeah, uh, it seems we used up a lot of time, so maybe it's soon time for the on-conference talk, right? Yes. Okay, thank you.